here start, starting the uh, six meter five row Supermax tank cultivator, uh, 2017 model. And we've got it fitted with uh, 46 tines with reinforced helpers. They are set at 13 centimeter spacing. A key to the product is this tine arrangement. The, the tine shape, the thin neck of the tine with the reinforced helper. The reinforced helper Return with M16 bolts on the frame 80 by 50 box section. It gives it 150% of the strength of a standard type of tine. The machine is able to allow that tine to vibrate. When the ground conditions are hard and dry, the, the tine vibrates and moves all of the soil. We fit a reversible point, which is our one bolt retention. Uh, in the future, we would hope to offer you, the customer, tungsten tips but we find that the present offering of this time has been durable, it's given good service life, and it is also at an economic cost. We also have the 45 centimeter roller fitted at the back. It's in Synthetic Ultra, which is our plastic material. This ring has been proven for many, many years, and because the machine is so long, you require a roller which is light, the 45 centimetre diameter roller is now going to be a standard for, for the long term. We also do a 33 centimetre roller. Behind the five rows of tines, we've got a 12 millimetre levelling harrow, which you can adjust fully on the quadrant here for both depth, and we can apply pressure to the arm of the following harrow. We can adjust the rake of the following harrow and by adjusting the rake of the harrow we can allow the free flow and passage of chopped straw, straw residue but also put pressure on so we can create a levelling action. Uh, the levelling action is very important obviously to distribute the material evenly across the, the profile of the soil. When the tine is working, as a rule what you find is that the guttler ring grabs the straw and keeps pulling it through. To most people the machine is typical of a, an old age spring tank cultivator, but its value cannot be generated or understood until it's used and you see the ability of it to break the surface in a very shallow manner without making any lumps and pulling up ground which you don't want to see, but you want to create an environment to generate the grass, barley, etc. Normally, you would run away with 125 horsepower, particularly at this sort of depth. Our operating speed would be typically between 7 and 12 kilometers per hour, per hour, depending on soil conditions and also field conditions. If it's very rough, then it's not really achievable to, uh, to ask the driver to, to do much more than 8 or 9 kilometers an hour. It depends on the ground. What we don't want to do is go too deep. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing here in this particular environment is to work very shallow, to move the stubble to get that chit for the black grass control and it, it, it's really really important that uh, that we go we don't go down to three inches deep in one pass if there's no benefit there at all we're looking to just work around an inch an inch and a half even shallower in some cases but because the straw has been led away we've got baler wheel marks we've got trailer wheel marks we've got to make a sensible compromise uh, to fit the practice of the farm for uh, for all of those reasons. Uh, depth control on the front here in one centimeter increments. We're running on pneumatic tires uh, which allow to allow give on the machine. The depth control is governed by these wheels and the setting of the linkage on the tractor is very important. We have four positions to set the depth. Uh, we're trying to pull the machine into the ground by using the link arms and keeping the top link in a very flat position. We have the roller there to give reconsolidation, but it's not reconsolidation uh, in the manner that a Cambridge roll would provide. We're looking just a firm level, break any lumps that we may have brought up. But what we don't want to do is, is roll the soil and smear it if it's wet. We can we should alter the roller in increments on here by one centimetre at a time by moving that pin 
What we're looking to achieve is, is almost to see a gap between the pin and the roller arm whilst in work. The more pressure we're putting on the top link, the more pressure that will be put to the rear roller and therefore the, the firmer and more stable the machine will sit. The machine is also able to be fitted with a flat spring levelling bar at the front and that extends the length of the machine. We're able then to work on plowed soil comfortably. Another option for the machine is to be able to remove the roller change the tine arrangement so that instead of having five rows of tines we have seven rows of tines still achieving a 13 centimeter spacing and still fitting the leveling harrow as you see we can also move this leveling harrow and fit it to the rear of the roller and fit a leveling bar in between the tines and the roller for example on plowed soil by doing that we then put the tine harrow on the back of the roller which allows us to, for working on ploughed soil and removing weeds, pulls the weeds up onto the top and leaves the weeds vulnerable to die in the weather. The machine folds in two three metre sections and we do a three metre, a five metre, a six metre mounted we then go to 6, 7, 9, 10 and 12 metres trail. The trail machines have a different configuration and hopefully we'll be able to show you that soon.